We had a, a recent, uh, it's being portrayed as a, a mob hit, a rub out here. Uh, uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday evening, it happened approximately 9 p.m. Uh, the gentleman, who by all reported accounts was the current uh, chief boss of the Gambino crime family, was assassinated in the front of his home. He was run over by a pickup truck, and witnesses say someone exited the truck after running him over and shot him six times in his torso. Uh, he was taken to the hospital, local hospital, where he was presented, uh, or he was uh, pronounced dead. So, um, so the city is kind of in a buzz. Uh, interesting coincidence. Um, Dapper Dan, uh, John Gotti, the the flashy. Some of you, especially youngins, you probably have to Google to go back. For again, you five oh, you fifty plus, you lived through this. Uh, very flat. He was the the Al Capone kind of photographer following him. He was the quote first celebrity celebrity Don. Thousand uh, dollars suit, maybe two thousand dollars suit. Just very very uh, presented himself, and he wore that mobster uh, persona with 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 great comfort. Uh, his the person holding that position it was is considered in many respects to be the diametric opposite of the flashy uh, John Gotti. You, you know, is a, a fresky, a Fra Francesco, they called him Frankie Boy, Cali, Francesco Cali, Frankie Boy. And i uh, rarely seen a public mood, stealth, um, wasn't trying to draw the media's attention, not flashy, just still handled the business, but handled it in the shadow. So back to the uh, our brother Prince situation. But now look at the outcome. Uh, the outcome, if again reported stories be accurate, this was considered some kind of mob related. If you look at the MO, uh, the last big time rub out, oh, it was Paul Castellano, right here in New York City outside of Steakhouse. It was on the cover of every newspaper, laid out, bullets riddled, pow, pow, pow. And again, if reports be accurate, they say John Gotti was the man who put that together. So it's interesting how they change your power in ships. Uh, so I think I did mention, or I didn't mention the other uh, coincidence. Uh, John Gotti's brother, Gene Gotti, just recently got out of jail. So just a very interesting time frame. And there was another big... Uh, crime, which uh, was, was another crime chief that just got acquitted. The name doesn't come out. All this happened on the set today. This is Thursday when I'm recording this. Uh, he got acquitted today. So it's like a lot of uh, that mobster chessboard is just like a lot of pieces being shifted, some removed and um, in, in New York it's still an interesting place. Going back again in history, a lot of air don't know. Rudolph Giuliani came and just went square at all five families and systematically as attorney general. This is even before he got he became mayor as attorney general. They dismantled or not dismantled I would the average fair assessment would say severely weakened all five families. Uh putting the heads all away. Life sentences, many dying, like John Gotti behind bars. So you know, but even prior to that the code broke. And, and, and back with Jay Prince and the code, do this behind uh, closed doors. The code, the rat, the this, and I mean, I believe Sammy the Bull was one of the guys who ratted on John Gotti. And, and Sammy the Bull was John Gotti's top, top lieutenant. He knew where all the bodies were buried, literally. So once that, and then this, that's how they deconstructed uh, that, that massive control they had over New York City. Those five families, you know, currently. Yeah, I mean, go back, you know, brothers still had Harlem on lock, Bumpy Johnson, I ain't, you know, take away from the Melvins who held it down, and you, they couldn't come down past 110th Street, so, so there was an understanding, but, yeah, so that, that, uh, gentleman, I believe, 50, 53, again, in your 50s, he rose through the ranks to be the top of what is considered a, a criminal family, or allegedly, alleged criminal family, so, Again, in your 50s, you are in your stride, positive or negative. You should be running and in charge. But to leave for you youngins, whether you're out with it, talking a lot, or whether you stealth. And I think John Gotti and uh, this deceased mob head, uh, Frankie Boy, present both 
or options, flashy or not, both can have really dire outcomes. So the straight and narrow is still the best way. I know the flash looks good. I know it may even be enticing, especially to our young men. Who doesn't want to just have a certain amount of accomplishment or wealth effortlessly? Look at half the videos they watch. These guys are in their early 20s pushing $100,000 cars. What could you do well enough in your young 20 life to be pushing a $100,000 car? So it sets our young people up for these fantasy scenarios. The only thing that's going to get you quick money like that will usually end up in two places, penitentiary or uh, somebody's cemetery. So, so again, either way, stealth under the radar can still have negative outcomes. Flashy, I'm the man, I'm the best that ever did it, can still have a very negative outcome. So, uh, I believe that's all I wanted to cover. I, I just uh, thought about this a little while and I said I wanted to share some thoughts and uh, bring you all back in Akabu Ahmad's studio and uh, just give an upload. I do have some great stuff planned. I had two elders. Uh, both in their early 80s with a history in in the movement. I'll say that because they're going to uh, categorize what their steps in consciousness was. And this is going to go through the 40s and 50s. A lot of people don't know how critical the 40s and 50s were related to shaping and setting things up for that major and impactful 60s. It didn't fall out the sky. So again, two elders. One of them, you know already, I'm tempted to give, give well, both of you probably will know. No, I ain't giving you no names. Tune in. But it's going to be action-packed, I guarantee you. And I'm going to take my time and just let these, these wise elders share the things they've seen. Not just, you know, picking up and reading and seeing the video, but they both of them walked with Malcolm. Both of them knew Elijah Muhammad. Both of them knew some of the movers and shakers that walked through Harlem. So you're going to hear an insight that I don't think it's, it's anywhere else in TV or social media. But hold me to that. This is your brother, Herman Smalls. Thank you again for your time. Continue to tune in. And, and hopefully I can maintain a flow of information and knowledge that would uh, be insightful and also inspirational. I hope you hear something that makes you either think in a way, act in a way, or plan in a way that benefits you. And if it benefits you, it's going to benefit us. So thank you. Peace and pain.